Hello and welcome to Wolf Ridge in the North Shore. My name is Caroline. My name is Robbie, and today we're exploring earthworks. Oh. <laughs> Robbie, the phone is ringing. Hello? Oh my gosh, you do? Oh, incredible, where is it? Okay, Robbie, we just got a report of an earthwork found nearby. Let's go find it. Hey folks, my name is Mike. I'm the program coordinator here at Wolf Ridge and I made that earthwork. Uh, it was kind of fun seeing how it's changed. Uh, I finished with it maybe 15 minutes ago. And even just in that time, this, this tree shadow has moved across it. So it's, it's kind of fun to see how my perspective has changed from when I started. Uh, kind of a fun part of the process. So at this earthwork, what I really enjoy about it is that all of the materials are gathered from the same tree. So we've got sticks from the birch tree, we've got fungus that was growing on it, and the bits of wood that were chipped out of the tree by a pileated woodpecker. So the person who made this put all of these materials in a new way using some shapes, triangles, circles, and other patterns to make their earthwork. Now that we've looked at some earthworks, let's find out what makes an earthwork an earthwork. It's outside! It's outside! It's outside! It's outside! It's outside! Number two, they're made of natural materials. And number three, it's temporary. Earthworks can be made by anyone, but let's highlight some really cool professional earthwork artists to get some inspiration. This piece is by Andy Goldsworthy, and I can tell that he took a lot of time to find the exact sticks that he wanted to incorporate into this piece. When making an earthwork, you can look for materials that really stand out because of their shape or color or texture, or sometimes, as in this piece by Richard Long, just a simple rearrangement of very common items can have a profound effect. Think about the materials that you can find by your home. Sticks, rocks, leaves, branches. You can also play around with size when you're making an earthwork. You might choose to make one that's very, very tiny, or you could go the route that Robert Smithson took when he made this earthwork, which is so large it acts as a jetty in the Great Salt Lake. How are you going to experiment with size with your earthwork? This piece is by Nils Udo, and I really like how this artist used a gradient of colors and also incorporated lines vertically up and down. What colors do you think you could find around your home to make an earthwork? This is the Living Pyramid by Agnes Dennis, found in New York City. This earthwork truly embodies the idea of temporary because residents from the community get to plant different flowers and grasses and watch it grow. Humans have been creating art from their natural surroundings for thousands of years. One example are the pictograms made by native peoples at Hegman Lake near Ely, Minnesota. The pictograms were depicted by native people, likely within the last 500 to 1,000 years. Different colors have different meanings in native cultures, and red, which is used in most pictographs, is a sacred color. Pictographs in the Superior Quetico region are often on rock faces above water, suggesting that the artist was standing in a canoe when they made them. Another example are the Nazca lines found in Peru. These 2,000-year-old geoglyphs were made by removing the soil and rocks to create the brighter colors you see as lines. There are over 50 different geoglyphs depicting different plants, animals, and designs, which can only be fully seen from the air. The Nazca people started with small images and progressed to bigger designs as time went on. The reason we can still see these geoglyphs is because the sandy soil of the dugout area contrasts so starkly with the rusty color of the topsoil. Before we make our own earthworks, let's explore some of the little aspects of earthworks that you can be thinking about as you're creating. I picked out here some objects that I really think represent shapes. Here is like the circular cross section of a branch, but there's also kind of an angle to it if you look at it from the side. 
This piece of birch bark is very rectangular, but also kind of flat. So you can experiment with 3D objects, 2D objects. I also have a, a branch here that's very straight in a line. Um, you can find circles, triangles, squares, anything that you really see um, can be used to make a really cool earthwork. So as I was walking around the woods here, I picked up some different materials that inspired me for different types of textures. I've got birch bark here, two-sided, one side a little bit smoother um, than the other. I've also got some, some lichen, which is really uh, fluffy and almost a little bit spongy. You can move it in and out like that. I've got a bit of a spruce tree here, a little bit spiky, um, and then a spruce cone as well. So lastly, we're gonna look at colors. And for winter in Minnesota, you might think there's not a whole lot around, but I've uh, gathered a pretty good number of colors. We've got white for snow, but also um, the white showing up on this log, some sort of fungus probably. I've got green from some plants uh, from last season that overwintered in the, in the leaf litter. On the back of this log, another sort of sort of fungus um, that's showing up almost looks like it's charred or burnt for a nice deep black color and if we get a close-up on this log here there's almost a red or orange color something a little bit more rare to find in the winter landscape creating earthworks always helps me see nature in a new way for example the earthwork with the sticks in between the trees like a ladder, it made me think of climbing trees every time I see something just like that. Now it's your turn to head out your door, walk around, check out your backyard, and get inspired to make earthworks with the materials around you. Since we're working in the outdoors with natural materials and living things, we want to take a minute to talk about stewardship when creating earthworks. One thing to remember as you're working on your earthwork is to not harm any living plants or trees. You are free to use any natural materials you find as long as the things are already dead. You shouldn't take from anything that's still alive. And the ideas that Caroline mentioned there can be summarized in the phrase of leave no trace or LNT. A lot of times when you go to state or national parks, they're very serious about those regulations. So it's a good idea to not make earthworks, not be moving things around when you're in a state or national park. Good thing to remember. And one last thing is once you're done working on your earthwork and enjoying it and sharing with it with others, you should take it apart and spread out all of the materials uh, so that you don't leave them up. They're temporary. Hey Caroline, I'm just flipping through my nature journal here and I'm looking at uh, all the birds that we saw last week. What do you think we can add for this week? Hmm. Well, we could write in our nature journals about um, what it was like to make our earthwork. Maybe we could draw or sketch um, our earthwork that we made or maybe there were some cool colors or textures that inspired us that we could draw in there. Um, using colors and paints could be a cool option mm -hmm, as well. Mm -hmm. And maybe you have a camera and a printer at home. You could even print out a picture of your earthwork and tape it inside your nature journal. Thank you for joining us this week for Earthworks. I hope you have fun making some of your own. Here's a preview for what to expect next week. Hey, Robbie, what are you doing? Forecasting the weather. With bubbles? Uh-huh. How do you do that? We can tell which direction the wind is coming from. It's coming out of the northwest right now. So we've got uh, the future weather is going to be a little bit colder and drier. Oh my gosh. Find out next week when we explore the weather how one could possibly know that just by knowing the wind's direction. <laughs> Carol and I. <laughs> okay, oh my god, we're three. losing it! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Filming.